two, three, four. Well, good morning, church family. Sundays are still for church, and we welcome you into the space, even though that you're not here. We know that God is invading your space and your home. So what I want you to do is just create a space for our Savior as we worship the Father. Amen.
be close, close to your side, so heaven is real, and death is a lie, I want to hear voices, angels above, singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy.
Hello and welcome to Carmel Mountain Christian Church. Thanks for joining us today for Church at Home. We're glad that we can fellowship with you and learn together from the scriptures. We have a couple of announcements this week. We're first of all gonna have our women Monday, 6.15 p.m. That's by Zoom. And you can get more information about that from women's ministry at carmelmountainchurch.com. We also have our Wednesday morning time, midweek Bible study with Pastor and Linda. That's at 10 a.m on our Facebook channel, Carmel Mountain Church, on Facebook Live. We also have Thursdays. We are meeting in person for prayer. That's gonna be at the church building, and it is gonna be socially distant, taking temperatures, wear your mask, and bring your list of prayer requests for friends and family, five o'clock on Thursdays at the church building. If you are new to Carmel Mountain Church, would you take a minute to say hello? If you would just text us a quick text to CMC, at 833-535-0980. We would love to say hello and to connect you with ministries we have here, like our, our groups that meet online in various different capacities for midweek encouragement and uh, sometimes scripture studies together. Also, as we prayerfully get together our tithes and offerings this week, uh, take a look at the slide. You've got a lot of different options that make it easy to do that and um, pray what God would lead you to give. It's a lot easier, I think, during the holidays to give. Maybe not this year, but we want to act in faith as people. So prayerfully, let's join together and let's give today and our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Father, you are so good. We are so grateful. We love that it's the holidays. We love that this is about you. This is the, the month of the year that we just enjoy you, the light of the world who's come to us. And we want to give you the first fruits of all that you've given us. And we pray that you would continue to provide for every person under the sound of my voice right now, that you would enrich and provide peace and fill with the fruit of the spirit and fill their cup to overflowing so that they can continue to walk in power in strength and enjoy with you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. I don't know about you, but sitting in the warm light of a lit tree can be some of the most peaceful time that happens during the Christmas season. It's often even after people have gone to bed and I'm the only one awake in the house, maybe the dog is curled at my feet, 
And that is where the contemplation happens. That is where I connect with God after a busy day. And that light somehow ushers in peace. Well, earlier this week, the lights didn't come on when I tried to turn them on. And I was all over the room trying to check to see if they're plugged in, to see if even the fuse was blown. And I checked the fuse box. I checked the cords to see if the animals had nibbled on them. Nothing was working. And I was getting really frustrated until my husband came home and flipped a switch behind our fish tank. Because that's where people would usually go to look for a switch for a Christmas tree. It didn't matter though. As soon as I saw the lights, I was so happy and I could sit and have my peaceful moment with God. Isn't it amazing how something simple like light can bring us such peace? Today is the Advent Sunday that marks peace. It is where we look towards the coming of Christ and the ultimate peace that he will bring and where we celebrate the peace that came that night when Jesus was born. In scripture, the prophets were the lanterns and the flashlights to their people. Lanterns that gave hope in their own time and flashlights that pointed towards the future coming of the Prince of Peace. God promises us in Isaiah 26, three, that he will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed or focused on him because we trust in him. And that doesn't mean we have to constantly be consciously thinking of God, but that we know he's there, that we're leaning into him, that we are looking for that light in each moment with him, and that that brings us peace. And then once we have it, we become the lanterns and the flashlights for a dark and weary world, as the carol says. Will you join me in praying the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi as we ask God to meet us in this Sunday of peace and help us be peacemakers in this world. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome to Carmel Mountain Christian Church. I am Pastor Ken Hudson. I am the lead pastor here at Carmel Mountain Christian Church. So happy Sunday to you. We're glad you joined us today. We have a message in a series that we're in called Hope. And today's message is going to be about hope deferred. Hope deferred. So before you do anything, why don't you push the like button and push the share button. And why don't you make a plan on sharing this video with someone that you know who needs it. And if you don't want to do that right now, then wait till the end. And then prayerfully you'll go, oh, wow, that was great. I know this is the exact message that then you fill in the blank needs to hear and send them the message. Amen. So I hope all is well. You're staying safe. I hope that uh, you had a great Thanksgiving and are looking forward to Christmas, which is just right around the corner now as we get ready. We're in the Advent season of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let me pray, and then we'll get right on into our message. Jesus, you're with us today. This is the season when the world has no choice but to turn its eyes towards you. And what you did when you came to earth at Christmas time when we celebrated. So I just pray, Lord, that this message for today will bless someone and bless someone's heart. And God, that you will meet them, touch them, be with them exactly where they are. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope deferred. Hope deferred. So there's a word in there, deferred, that automatically kind of makes us not really want to be involved with that. We really don't want that because deferred suggests 
some waiting. It suggests something that's not happening right now, but maybe it's going to happen a little bit later on. And for the most part, eh, we don't like that so much. We kind of like and want what we want, and we kind of want it right away. You know, that's why McDonald's right over there is so successful, right? They're successful because they say they're going to get your food and get it to you quick. That's why it's called fast food, so you can get it quickly. It's not called deferred food, where you're going to have to sit and wait. It's interesting. We lived in Spain for 11 years, and they don't have really the same philosophy. It's a cultural thing. In America, it's a cultural thing to want what we want right now and not have it deferred. When we were in Spain, you already knew when you went out and you were doing something or going to have dinner, it was going to take a while. It was going to be an event. You're not going to go to dinner and have, get it and have it and be out the door in 30 minutes. It's going to be 90 minutes. It's going to be two hours, whatever it's going to be. Actually, the only thing we want deferred is payments, right? Paying money back or something like that, we want it deferred. But everything else, we don't. And we certainly don't want our hope deferred. The things that we're hoping for and the things that we're hoping down in the future, we don't usually want those deferred. We want those right now. But hope is going to be deferred, and I can't really think of a better character in the Bible where that happens to than our good friend Abraham. So let's go into the Bible in Romans chapter 4. And verse 18, which says this, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as, as it had been said to him. My message really is not today about the story of Abraham in its entirety. But we know that Abraham was told by God that he was going to be a father of many nations when he was an old man. And even if he could father a children, his wife was so old that the Bible tells us that her body and her womb had closed. It was over. She's way, way too old to have children. So this scripture tells us against all hope, Abraham hoped. You all get that? Against hope, he hoped anyway. And that's my message for today is going to be about how do we have hope against hope. We have to understand that the hope that we have in things is going to get de deferred. It's going to get pushed off. It's going to be out there in the future somewhere. Watch last week's message if you see exactly and you want to know exactly. What I mean by that. So there's three things about wait, waiting and hope deferred that I want to talk about today. One of them is waiting. The second thing is holiness. And the last thing is persuaded. Persuaded. So the first thing, waiting. Write that down. Everybody say wait. And you already heard what I had to say about waiting. We don't like to wait. Prolonged waiting has an effect on us, and the effect that it has on us, if it's something that truly, truly we are hoping and have to wait for, it can be like an affliction to you. It can be like an affliction, almost like a sickness, an illness that will not go away because we keep longing and we keep wanting and hoping for that thing to happen. Let me give you some samples. And as I'm saying this, trust me on this, please. I have compassion on you and compassion on whoever might be fitting in these situations. I don't say this lightly, and I know it can be painful, but that's not my finishing touch for today. It is something that I say now which may cause pain. I just want us to understand that hope and hope can get deferred, and the pain that we can have, the mental anguish and the physical anguish that we can have when we're in a position or a posture of deferred hope. Here is an example. It's praying for salvation for somebody 
who you love. And you've been praying for them and praying for them and praying for them, and they are not changing. That is a hope that seems, while you're in the middle of it, that is getting deferred. And it can be hurtful and it can be painful because you are praying and you're going, how long, God? I've read your word and I know what your promises are and what you've said. And I keep praying for this person because I love them. I want to see them when I get into glory. And I want them to be with me when I get to heaven. And they are not changing. They are not changing. I have some people in my life that way that I have been praying for and praying for, and praying for. And one person I'm thinking of in particular that I've been praying for, and I don't know, it's been a few years ago, six, seven, eight years ago, something like that, I was talking to him about God and the gospel, or I wanted to, and he said to me, I don't want to talk about or hear anything about that God stuff. Quote, unquote, I don't want to hear that God stuff. But do you know that same person? Last year, we was going through something, and I approached him again, and I said to him, do you mind if I pray for you about that? And he said, sure, you can go ahead and pray for me. Listen to me. That's hope deferred. Seven or eight years ago, he didn't want to even want to hear about God, nothing about it. And now, just, you know, a mere five, six, seven, eight years ago, some of my hope that got deferred to that time and moment was that person now loosened up a little bit and said, yeah, I'll let you pray for me. You all see where I'm going with that? So that can be very painful. How about when you're in a dead-end job. Do you know that people spend their whole career in a job they were never meant to do? People just search and search and search. They change jobs. They do this for a while, do that, and they never find the purpose or get in the job that God intended for them to have or the job that they know they're supposed to have. And the hope that they're going to get into a job because they have to go to school and they have to do this or they have to do that to get this over here and they didn't do this over here so they don't get that over there or whatever the case may be. And the hope that they're going to have the job and move on gets deferred because of life. Sometimes you get married, you have children. And what you thought you were going to do got deferred, and some people end up never doing it. And it's like an affliction or a lingering sickness that's in their head, that's in their mind, that's in their emotions. And, of course, there's long-term illnesses. People have illnesses that they're suffering from and they've been suffering from and they've been praying and praying about it. Jesus, you came and you healed the sick. All I need is a word and just a touch from you, God. And it's not that they don't believe necessarily. It isn't that they don't believe. It's just they keep praying and praying and praying about this lingering illness in themselves or they pray about it that's lingering illness or whatever is going on with their child or their husband or their spouse or someone they know and they don't get an answer, we don't get an answer and our hope just keeps going and waning and waning. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep praying about this? Why am I saying what I'm saying when nothing seems to change? Let me tell you, your hope may be just deferred a little bit. It may be. Did you know also there are people, couples, who are trying to have children and don't have them? Either they can't conceive miscarriages, you know, have a miscarriage, and then after a couple of miscarriages, it's so traumatic. It's such a hard thing. After a couple of miscarriages, like, I can't go through that again. I can't. We can't. We just can't. It's too heart-wrenching. It's too painful. And their hope of having children then gets deferred or put off or not at all because of that situation. Oh, I understand. This isn't just a preacher standing up here who's just trying to deliver a bunch of words to you. That is some real life stuff. What's your situation? I may not have touched on it. The ones, But what is it that you keep praying about, you keep hoping for, that's in line with the word of God, 
that you don't have and you don't have it yet. Proverbs 13 and verse 12, Solomon says this, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And heart sickness goes to the core of the individual. It goes to the core of your mental state of mind. It goes to the core of your emotional state of mind. And it can go to the core of your physical state of mind because the thing that you're hoping in is getting deferred. What are some of the symptoms maybe of that? I listed some. Despair depression, anxiety, hopelessness, and sometimes you actually get physically sick. Physically sick. But if we go back and we take a look at that Proverbs 13 and verse 12 scripture, if we go back and look at that again, it says this right here. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But here it is, here it is, here it is. But a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. A tree of life. Has anybody ever heard that before, a tree of life? Does anyone remember back in the Garden of Eden and there was a tree of life? And the tree of life supplied everything that you need. Let me tell you that your hope deferred, you have to go back to the tree of life and trust in the tree of life, which is in the name of Jesus Christ. One, hope deferred is an opportunity to trust God. Hope is an opportunity for us to keep on hope, hoping against hope and trust in God. Hope Deferred is not the time to turn against God. Hope deferred is the time to turn towards God and to God. Can someone out there say amen? See, our hope gets deferred and becomes hopelessness when we blame God for things. Instead of turning to God, we turn away from God and blame him for the things that are not going the way we want them to go and our hope deferred. No, turn to God instead of turning against God. You see, what person do you know that turns to the person or the thing they think is causing the problem to help solve the problem and end it for them? Normally, we don't do that. We get angry at that. Don't be mad at God. Hope deferred. Put your trust in him and see what he's got for you in this time period of being in the valley or this time, the period of praying and see what he's got specifically for you. Two, hope deferred allows God to strengthen our character because trust me, that's what it's all about. It's about us and our character. Do we trust God and love God only when we're on the the peak of the mountain, or do we also trust God when we're down in the valley, when we keep praying and praying and praying about the thing and it doesn't seem like it's coming to pass? Where are we with that? Allow God to strengthen your character and make you the person that you should be. Isaiah chapter 40 tells it perfectly in verse 31. But they that wait on the Lord, not maybe, but shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and shall not faint. Let me tell you all, to wait on the Lord, to wait on the Lord, and he will renew your strength. I pray, God, that you renew somebody's strength right here, right now, that they may be able to run, run, run this race, without fame. Let them mount up, God. Maybe they're not ready to mount up on wings as eagles just yet. So I trust, God, that you will teach them to strengthen themselves in the hoping process and in the waiting process. The sec th second thing is holiness. Holiness. Number three. 
Hope deferred should not interfere with our sanctification. Sanctification means being set apart. It's the process of purification, being made holy, that God is trying to work, and he's trying to work it out in us. So when we're in the deferred hope phase, it is a chance for our character to be worked out, and it is a chance that we have to work on our sanctification and being set apart from other people because we're not supposed to respond to that the same way that the world does. We're supposed to respond to that differently than the world does. Keep on praying, somebody. Keep on praying because your hope just might be deferred just a little bit. I read a quote I like on this. It said this, being dedicated to God's service is our part. Being set apart from sin and being made holy is God's part. Did you all get that? That's God's part. Is your part, is my part to do what we're supposed to be doing and do what we're told to do. It's God's part to help make us holy. John 17, 15 through 17. This is Jesus talking. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Did you all catch it? Jesus said to make us holy. He said to his father, I've done what I'm, you sent me here to do. Now when they've confessed me with their mouth and believed me in their heart, then you, God, make them holy by seeing the truth, which is in me. So we have a responsibility in that to walk that out. This right here, when Jesus said, we're, don't take them out of the world, leave them in the world. Don't we understand that when Jesus said, leave them in the world, that automatically activated hope deferred. Automatically. That automatically, because we're stuck here, we are here on this earth, we have a job, we have a mission, but this is not our home. Our hope deferred is in glory. Talked all about that last week. So automatically, because you're here, you have a hope that is deferred. But in the interim, between the glory hope, the hope that's in glory, the hope that you're going to see Jesus again, in between that, we have little hopes. Some of those little hopes that we have, we get what we hope for quickly. Other things, it gets deferred out there a ways. But that doesn't mean that we should stop praying about it and we should stop doing what God wants us to do because there is a sanctification process, the process that God is working out in us to make him more like him and to make us holy. So we can't let our deferred hope keep us from the sanctification process. Be holy, you all, as he is holy. What do we have to do? We have to think about the things that Jesus thought about and thinks about in the process. Is this something Jesus would say? Is this something Jesus would do? And the final thing is persuaded. Out there, right there, out there where you are right now, everybody say, a persuaded. And if you're in the room with someone, then say to them, persuaded. Women, take out your compact if nobody is there with you and look at it and say, persuaded. Are you persuaded? And are you persuaded? And what are you persuaded with? Four, we must be convinced, unwavering, and steadfast in the power of God. Are you persuaded? 100% can't turn your head, not going to go in another direction, persuaded that God is who he said he was, is, and will do what he said he'll do. Are you 100% persuaded as your hope about those other things are being deferred, deferred and put off? Abraham was 
in his own little way. Let's go back to Romans. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, and Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This is why it is credited to him as righteousness. Come on now, somebody. Come on now. Abraham and Sarah, sorry. Come on. Hope against hope. That is hope against hope that he's going to be the father. What? So what is it that your hope is deferred that's running through your head right now as I'm preaching this message? It's been running through there. You had something or something going on in mind when I started this message and said hope deferred and explained to you. Look at Abraham, the father of many nations and his hope, he never wavered. Don't waver, folks. I pray. I pray for you today. What will keep you from wavering? Three things. One, hope in the facts of God. What are the facts of God that you know about? One thing is you know for sure if he did it before, he can do it again. All the things you read in the Bible, if he did those things, he could do it again. And all the things you know in your life that seemed impossible, you had thrown in the towel, it was over, and God came and said, no, I'm not done with that yet, and he rescued you. Then how about you think on those facts about God, that if he said he was going to do it, he did it. Number two, hope in the promises of God. Not my promises, unfortunately, not the promises of some other stuff that's going around, but what are the promises of God? Because what he said is yes and amen. Three, hope in the power of God. Is your God omnipotent? Is he all-powerful? Can he do anything but fail? He can't be against his own character. But the power that God has, do you, are you persuaded 100% that he can do what he said he can do and is going to do it? So even though I've been praying for about this thing, God, I've been praying for years, God, about this thing. It seems like you've turned a deaf ear to what I'm saying, God, because I'm not getting the answer that I think was according to the scripture. I think it was according to what you said, God, but I've been walking that prayer out for a while, and I ain't heard nothing about it. I have not heard a word about it. Maybe your hope is deferred. Are you persuaded that if he said it, I'm going to keep walking, and I'm going to keep walking it out until it's carried out, until I see it? And even, what if you don't see it? Come on now. Why do we have to think that we have to see everything? We don't have to see it. What if someone gets saved as a result of us losing our life? Greater love has no man or woman than to, you all know how it goes. So why do we always think that I have to see it? God can work it even after we're gone and we're gone home to glory. He still can do what he's going to do. We don't have to see everything that we're praying about. We don't have to see it to fruition. Come on now. We don't. That was a good word for somebody. Hope deferred means you and the love of God are one. There's no separation between you and the love of God. Hope deferred means God loves me 
in whether I see it or don't see it, I'm persuaded that he'll bring it to pass. I'm also persuaded of what Romans 8 and 30. 8, 38, and 39 says. Hope somebody picks this up today. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. Someone tap their chest and say, shall be able to separate me. From the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Oh, no, touch you. Touch you. Because I covered everything. It don't ma doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't make any difference what it is. It cannot separate you from the love of Christ. Cannot. Here's my prayer for you today. Keep on praying. Yep. Could it be? That the praying part is your responsibility and the carrying out, the fruition, the fulfillment will happen over here, but it's your job to pray. Do you ever think about that? Do I ever think about that? It's my job to pray and then let God do, do what he wants to do when it's time for him to do it. Because you know what? No matter how long we, our hope is deferred and how long we keep praying, we just keep on doing it because I'll tell you something. God's timing is perfect. <laughs> God's timing is perfect every single time. He's never missed it. He's never missed it. So you do what God needs you to do, which is keep on praying. Keep on asking, and it shall be given to you. Heavenly Father, we don't like the way. And you know that. We don't like it. But I know down in my soul that some of the things that you have for me and you have for the people, we have to wait on it. And I also know, Heavenly Father God, we may not see the end of it. That's entirely possible. But our trust is in you, God. Not in me, not in man, and not in things. But my trust is in you. So I pray, trust I pray that we're persuaded, God, that you are who you said you are. And you're not will do, but are doing what you said you would do. And we're persuaded that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you are also my God. And you are also our God. Patience, patience, wait on the Lord. And he shall renew our strength. We love you and praise you today, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. There you have it. That's my message for today. Come on now. Share that with somebody. Somebody's depressed. You know somebody's going through. Oh, I'm going through. Send them this message. Huh? Send them this message and be blessed. And we will see you next week. God bless you. Thanks so much for being with us today. We're glad you joined us for the service, and we'd love to connect with you. If you accepted Christ into your life during this service, that is huge, and we celebrate with you. The angels are celebrating with you in heaven, having a party. Please let us know that this decision has been made. Text us SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to 833-535-0980. And if you would like to connect with people for some support to find out about our upcoming events or just to share scriptures that are coming to your mind and heart, text TRIBE1, T-R-I-B-E-1, the number one, to 833-535-0980. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Have a fantastic week. I wanna be into your heart, loving the world, hating the life. I want to see dry bones living again, singing as one.
The mountains shake before you The demons run in At the mention of the name King of majesty There is no power in hell For any who can stand Before the power and the presence of the great I am The great I am 